the day one, uh, day one and day two was mainly about uh, forums where we had the qualified engineers, those who were degreed, as well as uh, and uh, technologists, those who were called BTEC, and those who've got diplomas. We sat in, in, in separate uh, venues to discuss issues that are relevant to us in our different categories. When we were having that discussion, sort of common issues were mainly about proper placement, uh, utilization, especially with the skills. As for engineers, it was, it was not as bad as it was for the technologies, because in the defense force, we do not have a technologies master. So it's either you are an engineer or you are an artisan. And normally, most of the time, we refer to our artisans as technicians. But we also have this middle one, which was muddled up, which, which, which formed the technologists or technicians. So it wasn't clearly defined. But with the work that is taking place in future, we are moving towards that being clearly defined and we have already seen the policies that are waiting for approval which clearly defined and then we're going to have a proper engineering capability which has all four legs working together. So everyone was uh, engaging, that was a beautiful thing and one thing that came out was the recognition especially for these two in the middle that have not come through because of the way the organization is structured. And everyone is embracing the move, not to just focus on the placement, but also on the utilization and professional development. So it was great to see the engagement and to see that people really want to develop and people want to engage and participate in uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Then uh, had uh, the generals, all the service chiefs were invited and that included uh, uh, Chief HR. The aim was to ensure that the recommendations that came from the forum discussions can be presented and to give an opportunity for all the recommendations that we come up with or resolutions to be interrogated by our principals. Uh, unfortunately, due to commitments, most of them could not make it. However, we had uh, some of the, some were represented by other generals and other generals, and we were able to engage and they were able to give guidance to the recommendations that we had they were able to give guidance. One such uh, uh, major one was that we need to establish the DOD Engineering Science and Technology Council, which is going to be driven, which is driven by the Code of Conduct, the EXA Code of Conduct, and the Code of Conduct for the uniformed members of the SNDF, where we focus on professionalism and we focus on ensuring that we execute our duties uh, diligently and professionally, which means we need now, instead of being comfortable that we are doing our job, we need to step out and do our jobs more diligently and be out there and ensure that we are developing ourselves in line with the extra requirement that we need to cont continuously develop ourselves professionally. So keep abreast with the new technologies, with the new development in the different industries, and particularly since we are in the defense force, we need to keep abreast with what is happening within the industry and what is happening within the different technologies. Which is why this conference was very important and the theme, DOD getting ready for the fourth industrial revolution, that is why we need now all services to have a commitment in undertaking with the Engineering Council of South Africa, which is going to pave the way of professionally developing all their engineering personnel in line with the EXA requirement, which with the 11 EXA outcomes. Then everyone who is an engineering personnel and a professional is well-rounded because the 11 outcomes cover all the aspects. It's well -rounded. It's not just because you're an engineer, it's design. Because you're an artist, it must be fitting. So it covers, you need to be a rounded engineer who's able to take decisions and make informed decisions wherever you are.